You know what? On the bright side, in my playoff bracket, I did have the Canucks beating the Predators in six and not five. So I'll choose to look at that aspect of this game as a positive one. The Vancouver Canucks have just lost Game 5 of their 2024 first round Stanley Cup playoff series against the Nashville Predators at home on Rogers Arena ice. And this game was one where I feel like the Canucks just kind of let get away from them. That's it. I feel like for the majority of the contest, let's say 45 minutes out of 50, or 50, what am I talking about, out of 60... I feel like the Canucks were the better team. They outchanced Nashville for the majority of the game. They had the lead to open up the third period, but it was Nashville's resilience. It was Nashville's leadership who eventually stepped up. And once they got themselves the lead, that was when they were able to really lock in and say, okay, let's just go back to our strategy of blocking shots and making sure that everything that gets thrown to the net doesn't go on net. Also, compiled with the Vancouver Canucks themselves missing a bunch of opportunities, they had a lot of great looks. My goodness, the deserve to win meter was cracked out for Vancouver for a good chunk of this game. But Vancouver's own inability at some of these plays just cost them in this one, because there were multiple moments where they had a beautiful scoring chance in front. They did the setup right, they made the passes right, but then... When it comes to the final puck touch, that's when it kind of fumbles off the stick in a bad way. And honestly, if you replay a lot of the chances the Canucks had in this one over and over again, like maybe five times out of ten, these are going in. It's just a whole bunch of them did not. The only goal scored by Vancouver wasn't even one of these plays. It was just a straight shot. So good job to Nikita Zadorov for getting the only Vancouver Canucks goal in this game. It's a simple play, really. I mean, the Canucks are breaking out, Hughes goes over to Zadorov, and then he dangles right by the two Nashville guys that are forechecking. Zadorov then just forces his way into the offensive zone. Nobody is with him, the Canucks are on a change, and then Zadorov just kind of fires it towards the goal. He notices that UC Soros is cheating into the middle, so Zadorov's like, okay, I'm just gonna go short side. Bam! There you go! And it's in the back of the net. Beautiful goal there by Nikita Zadorov to give the Canucks the one nothing lead. Lead. That was going to be our angle. That was going to be our headline. Hey, Nikita Zadorov has just done this. That's his second goal of the series. Name a better duo than the Canucks scoring one goal in a playoff loss against Nashville and Nikita Zadorov being the guy who scored the goal. That's what exactly happened in Game 2 as well, if you remember that. So Zadorov has been getting a big offensive bump out of this playoff series, and this one continues into Game number 5. And then you had yourselves the plays made by Nashville where they were able to convert. The one goal that started it all was a really weird one. It was a Dakota Joshua to the box for boarding on Luke Evangelista penalty, and the goal came on the ensuing power play. The Preds break into the zone, and it's Roman Yossi who gets the pass right in front. He is behind all the Canucks D. He is all by himself, and it's a beautiful play. But his shot as he's cutting across the slot is stopped by Artur Silovs. The puck then squeaks underneath Silovs and he lies down, tries to cover it up, but the puck is on his side whilst he is lying down. And then it's Gustav Nyquist who comes right into the crease and he tries to jam away at it. His stick gets into Silovs midsection and pushes Silovs over the line and the puck is there too. Honestly, I feel like the Canucks could have challenged that. They didn't. I get it. You could say that it was a little bit contested because Teddy Bluger, Canucks forward, was also in that scrum, debatably acting as the cause of the push for Silovs. It was a messy play. I don't think you would have been able to guarantee with 100% certainty, though, that Nyquist was the goalie interference party in that situation. So the Canucks were not sure. They didn't challenge. 1-1 one, one game. And then the Predators score just a few minutes later, I think five minutes later, it's William Carrier with a long drive from the point, a big slap shot, and look, it gets right by Shilovs, it's a big screen in front, you've got Ryan O'Reilly right there, you've got Quinn Hughes also there, and as a result, you were not able to see a proper lane there. Arthur Silovs didn't even move. The puck was perfectly placed, though. What a great shot there by Carrier. He goes bottom left-hand corner. Pristine accuracy. Just a straight line into the back of the net there. And that is your game-winning goal. That's it. 
Now, the Canucks did have themselves some opportunities of their own. I feel like for the majority of the game, especially in the first five, ten minutes of the first period and the middle portion of the second, the Canucks just had chance after chance after chance. They were not converting on these. You had some really good opportunities all out in front. UC Soros was forced to make some really good saves in this one. And when it comes to that, I mean, the Canucks, they got to feel good about the way they were able to create offense. It's just the last finishing touches that I feel was their problem in this game here. And then towards the end, when the Canucks were down by one and they had themselves the empty net, this is where you started to see a little bit of hope. They tried to get some of that magic from Nashville back into this game, sprinkle back another comeback victory, but... In the third period, with the goalie out and with the Canucks on the 6-on-5, they kind of just stopped being good. Like... A lot of their passes became super sloppy, and they weren't able to control and hold the lines well, and they kept on having to relocate because they were offside, and... Yeah, just some sloppy execution towards the end there, but I can't really feel too bad about that, considering how strong the Canucks' offensive generation was in the earlier parts of the game. They were so good. There were a lot of chances, lots of great passing plays, one-touch tic-tac-toe opportunities where the finish was just off the post, or the finish was stopped by Soros, or a play out in front was stopped by the pad of UC Soros. Like, there was a lot of that in this game. But ultimately, the Canucks succumb to their own pressure, and it's Nashville who, at the very end of it, is able to get sustained offense in the third period and eventually the win. So, GG's over to the Nashville Predators. This game definitely wasn't an easy one. It was very tight, very chess-like, and that's been somewhat of a theme for the majority of this series. It's kind of funny, because, like, when I think about the games 1, 2, 3, and 4 that we had just played, or we had... I didn't play it. We didn't play it. No, we watched it. But thinking about those games, it's like, I feel the Vancouver Canucks were only really the better team, quote unquote, in games two and games five. And those were the two games that they lost. I'm saying that in game one, the Predators were the better team, but they lost because Dakota Joshua and the 12 seconds, amazing for Vancouver. Game three, Predators were the better team, but the Canucks turtled in and they got their shell on. It worked and they got the victory. And game four, yeah, the Preds were the best team for the majority of that game until the last three minutes when the Canucks decided that they wanted to win. So this game five, seeing Vancouver on home ice actually play very well and get some chances, get the crowd riled up and ultimately lose with one goal on the board. That's tough. And heading into Nashville, like, I just kind of hope that some of that mojo that we had seen is going to sustain itself. Like, I'm not saying, oh yeah, the Canucks should just go out there and be the worst team and they're going to win. Like, no, that's not a sustainable strategy at all. But considering the ebbs and flows of this series, it would not surprise me if Vancouver just kind of finds a way to get it done in Game 6. And of course, worst case scenario, they lose again, and it's a Game 7 in Vancouver that ends up going down. My question is, though, as well, heading into Game 6, do they play Artur Silovs? He was good in this game. He made all the saves he needed to make. The one that he let in, and I'm going to say one and not two, because the first Roman Yossi goal, that was total BS. The one goal that he wasn't able to stop, that was a screenshot, Hughes or Riley in front, and it's a long drive from the point from Carrier, it gets right by. So, I don't think this loss is on Seelovs at all. The Canucks forwards, I mean, I thought Miller looked good as always. Connor Garland had some nifty passes. Pia Sutar and Elias Lindholm, I thought, looked really good at certain moments. Connor Garland was really great defensively as well. Besser had a few opportunities in this one. Mikheyev actually had himself some offense. Although, to be honest, I don't really have any belief when Mikheyev has it on his stick. Like, I just kind of think, oh yeah, he's going to shoot and it's going to go off the side of the net and bounce away or whatever. But... Other than that, I think the guy that we need to be talking about as well to end off this video is Elias Pettersson, or Elias Pettersson, excuse me, because he has been a total non-needle mover in this series so far. And in this game in particular, you saw plays where he just kind of gets shoved down to the ice and yada yada. I know you're going to say in the comments, oh, that's not new. Like, he's always doing that. And it's like, yeah, it isn't new. But... At least in the past, we have seen that accompanied with some very good offense. There was like one high danger chance that PD had in this game. It was on the rush and he took the shot whilst going down in the fast break and that was it. But other than that, Elias Pettersson, I feel like he needs to be better. 
Everybody else, though, I think this game just kind of got away from them in regards to the way they were executing or trying to execute that offense. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Canucks dropping game five to Nashville, two to one. The series is now three to Vancouver as they head back over to Smashville. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.